A 50-year-old classroom social experiment on uh, fascism shows the psychological power of charismatic leaders to literally take over your mind. Our next guest was an original student uh, in the third wave, known as The Wave, and is traveling to classrooms around the world, teaching young people the dangers of repeating history. And he loves Israel, so he is uh, back in Israel. Please welcome Mark Hancock talking about uh, lesson plan and all kinds of things related to the same concept. I cannot believe the power of this social experiment. What was it like being a student? This is the 60s. So this is the time of the 60s. You're in California talking about, you know, fascism. Like, did you know what was going on? Not entirely. It was it was a uh, it was a history class, and it was a young. We were 15 in 10th grade. Our teacher was 25. It was his first year teaching. He was a very exciting and fun teacher. Um, it, when you think of the 60s, you often think of hippies and rock and roll. This is actually just before that. And so I like to tell people that when this happened, we were listening to the Beach Boys. But six months later, it was the Grateful Dead and Jimi Hendrix. Right. And so right. We, were, we were. You're right at the sweet spot of the of the change. We were just before the, what was what's now called the Summer of Love, which is some, 1967. So this mm -hmm. was spring of 67, and we hadn't quite hit the hippie movement yet. Right. So the counterculture hadn't quite set in. So now, given that this wave has literally been a wave, like yeah. decades over decades, and you you go on the road, you speak to students, like what. What is the piece from this that is so kind of scary for the fact that we are still talking about a threat of people like this doing this to us? I think the, the piece is that, it, is that fascism intolerance can happen so easily and so fast and it can happen to anyone and, and in many different situations. It's not just governments or countries. It, it can be, it can be an, an organization you belong to at home or it can mm -hmm. be political, it could be religious, it could be a whole lot of different things. You, I, it's I the think, same kind of personality type. Yeah, you have, you have your, there's always another charismatic leader or bully who wants to take away our rights. Right. And, uh, and there are, in, those, in the followers, there are many who don't really spend a lot of time thinking about it and, right. and they get caught up in it. So you obviously, you went on, you had a career in construction, you went to Berkeley, you went, you know, you now collaborated with one of your other classmates, went to UCLA. I mean, do you still feel the effects of this experiment? I mean, did it really do any kind of number on you? It did. I, I used to say jokingly that I don't trust anybody and I don't join groups. Um, I'm <laughs> yes. a lot more cautious Fair now. Groups. I'm a lot more cautious now than I, than I might have been otherwise. Um, the, so I, so I, I, I use what we call critical thinking, and, I, and I, if I'm going to be involved with people or with groups or thinking about that, I will, I will spend a little more time understanding what I'm, where I'm going and what you're I'm getting, getting yourself into. into. Exactly. Right. Of exactly. course, of course. So, so let's talk about what you're doing uh, here in Israel and why you know, this project is, is relevant you know, still. It's, our, our story, our class was a history class about the causes of World War II. And uh, so our teacher did talk to us about the Holocaust, and this this story shows up in many different kinds of schools and classes across middle school, high school, college, psychology, history, social studies, uh, even English classes in other countries. But it, it is primarily used in Holocaust classes, mm -hmm. and it's mainly used to show the elements and the appeal of extremism and how and how that can get started and how easily it is to get caught up to in get it. Well, out of control. And also, the lesson plan now is also a documentary yes. that you and uh, what's Phil, Phil Neal, Philip Neal, Philip your Neal. classmate, have you know been involved with. You know, right. what do you think? Um, you know, the takeaway is for people that weren't alive then to be able to see this now? Um, the, I think the, the primary use of our story in its many forms is, is to provoke thought. And especially in schools, you, it encourages kids to understand the dynamics of these things so maybe they won't get caught up in it, but also uh, it, it, it enables them to think about critical thinking and right. maybe they're a little less likely right. to, to rush into things. Thank you so much for coming in. I wish we had more time here. So interesting I, and fascinating. I wish we had more time. Uh, next time, uh, we'll come back. We'll come yeah. back next time you're in Israel. Okay? Thank you. I look Thank forward you. to that. Have Thank a good you very weekend. Much. Coming up next, it's